So in this video we're looking at harmonics and overtones and musical instruments. We're dealing specifically with pipes, open-ended pipes, that is, and, uh, well, you have to have an open-ended pipe, open and closed pipes, and we'll explain what those are, and uh, stringed instruments. So a stringed instrument's are usually the easiest place to start because people have more experience with them. If you consider a guitar string, um, where we would have one point where you push your finger down and the other point where the string is fixed, um, that length there is what we would call the length L of the string. And we represent the standing wave um, being produced like this for the most basic form of standing wave that can be formed on it. So this is an antinodal region, and these are nodes at either end, so quick recap there. Now this is what we would call um, the first harmonic. Okay, so let's write that, the first harmonic, or um, what we would call the fundamental, for obvious reasons. Okay, and uh, if we're considering the wavelength, um, the wavelength of this, um, from what we can see, it actually half of the wavelength is an, is an appearance here along that one single edge. That's half the wavelength. So we need to double the length to be able to get the full wavelength. So the wavelength is 2 times L. Okay, so that's for a string. That's for string. Um, and I, I didn't really get into the visual depiction a lot, but we, we represent it nicely like that because with a string, um, it clearly shows what the string is actually doing. It's vibrating between those two fixed positions with a greater amount of um, uh, amplitude or displacement the further from a node that you are. Okay, now it's convenient to use the same visual depiction when you're talking about uh, pipes. So I'll just show you here a pipe. An example of a pipe really simply might be um, a Coke bottle um, or any other glass bottle. Um, works better in glass bottles because plastic bottles vibrate too much. Um, loss of energy and you don't get much sound out of them but um, if we just represented it by a cylinder and this one we would call a closed pipe because it has a closed end there okay um, and when you blow air across the top um, it causes the column of air inside this uh, closed pipe to vibrate and uh, you get reflection um, of air off the end here, I think we talked about it in an earlier video but it sets up a standing wave inside inside this and we're going to draw the fundamental uh, for that so um, at this end, because it's open, there's plenty of room for the air particles to vibrate so it's an anti-node and at this end there's no room so that's a node Okay, and we can actually represent it in the same way um, showing our increasing displacement with a transverse wave even though it's a longitudinal wave so so our representation here, badly drawn, but you get the idea, meant to be inside the pipe, is a transverse wave. Um, kind of similar to if we were to cut half of our uh, string wave off and slip that inside of a pipe, that would give us the same thing. Okay, so uh, there's, there's a couple of things we need to focus on here. We've still got the length of the pipe, but in this case, we've only got a quarter of the wavelength um, of this wave in there. So uh, our wavelength in this case is going to be 4 times the length. Okay, 4L rather than 2L over here. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, this being a transverse representation, what are the particles actually doing? Um, and at this point in the node, they're not moving. It's, it's, uh, it's bouncing. That's where um, you would have, I guess, the string not moving right at the point where it's fixed there. And remember, the particles further up, as they're able to move, they're actually moving in place like this. So the further down you go, the less they're moving until they're not moving right at that point there. And it's just staying in the same place. Further away you go, it's moving more and more and more. And at an anti-node, the particles are vibrating the maximum amount. Okay, so that's the fundamental for a closed pipe. We also have something called an open pipe, and I'm going to draw this... Uh, sideways here. Open pipes are a little bit tricky conceptually um, but basically we've got an anti-node here, an anti-node here and to get a standing wave you have to have at least one node and one anti-node so you just have to take that as a given otherwise when you perhaps blow on this you might just blow air right through and you don't have a standing wave. Um, but we need a node in the middle halfway between anti-node. So that's going to be our fixed point 
and we're effectively going to have two there we go two I haven't drawn this particularly well once again hopefully you get the idea that this is the point where it crosses over and same down here it crosses over and in that middle is a node so in this case the length of the pipe um, is again half the wavelength so 2L will equal the wavelength um, and yeah an open pipe this is what we call an open pipe because it's open at both ends um, even though this pipe here is still open at one end it's a closed pipe because compared to a pipe that is open at both ends which we call open this is a closed one it's a closed end okay <coughs> um, so if you were to find a tube um, a piece of garden hose or a metal cylinder from a pen that you pull apart and you blow across the top you'll get a noise a noise I should noise is a technical term for white noise I think I've covered that before as well you'll get a sound you'll get a frequency um, when you're blowing on it and as soon as you cover up the bottom of it um, you'll get a different frequency produced um, because the wavelength is changing the wavelength will automatically become half the length if you oh, sorry I should the wavelength will automatically become a longer length as you close over that and that'll affect the sound um, respectively. Okay, this video is getting long. I want to rush through a little bit more, show you the second harmonic um, and the wavelength for that and the third harmonic and you'll start to see a pattern of how this is all developing. So for each of those three things. So if we go back to the string, um, the second harmonic, 